Hello and welcome back to Von Milhausen Plays, a channel where I, Von Milhausen, play a game chosen for me from my back catalogue at random by the Wheel of Fate. Last time the wheel gave us the first tree, a third person exploration, uh, narrative driven, kind of I guess an emotional experience about a uh, young man from Alaska making peace with the recent passing of his father. Um, actually, I enjoyed it quite a bit and I ended up moving to the number one spot on our game ranking table. So that was pretty good. Uh, so let's see what the wheel gives us this time. We will be playing Renegade Ops. in the world and we don't even know this maniac's real name. Catalonia City is a funeral pyre. There are more cities under threat. We have to decide. Negotiation or retaliation. Then, reluctantly, I say negotiation. Everyone wants something. This terrorist will be no different. I'll tell you what he wants. Terror, panic, chaos. <laughs> He calls himself Inferno. That sound like someone opened a dialogue? Thank you, General Bryant. But this council can decide this without any further outbursts from you. Save your vote. I know how this is going to end. You'll talk, and he'll talk back, and he'll laugh, and keep on burning cities while he's doing it. I'm done with this farce. do something, then maybe I know some people who will. So, this is Renegade Ops, a top-down twin-stick shooter that does its best to channel the spirit of the early 90s. It was developed by Avalanche Studios and published in 2011 by Sega, initially for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, and then later for Windows. A twin stick shooter is a shooting game that's designed for use with two analog sticks like you find on most console game controllers these days. One stick is used for moving your character around and the other for aiming your weapon. This is not really a type of game that I've ever really played before, so advance warning I'm very likely going to suck at this. Uh, looking at my purchase history it appears I picked up this game in February 2016 as part of a giveaway Sega were doing called Make War Not Love 3. Swedish developer Avalanche Studios is better known as the developers of the well-received Just Cause series, which are over-the-top open-world action-adventure games. In fact, Renegade Ops apparently uses a modified version of the engine that was used to power Just Cause 2. The game came about when Sega approached Avalanche and asked for a new cross-platform game using Avalanche's 3D engine. The development team wanted to take an underrepresented genre, find classic games that had unique spirit and flair for that genre, and then modernize the ideas from those games while keeping a core 90s style gaming experience. They reportedly had influences from the old NES game Jackal and the game Desert Strike from the Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis depending on where the world you're from as well as from the G.I. Joe cartoon from the mid-1980s. The plot is suitably cartoony, as you just saw yourself. Total development time was 18 months start to finish, and the game was reasonably well received, with Metacritic and user scores averaging around 75%. Now, I've played a tiny bit of this while I was doing some test recording, and I think I am going to play this game in... Casual mode. 
there are three difficulty modes as you can see um <sighs> casual i'm going to pick because this isn't really my type of game and i've only ever used a controller for 2d platform games and even then i've only really used a d-pad uh, so this is going to be my first real outing uh, trying to divide my attention between two analog sticks. Uh, I played normal mode when I was doing my test recording and I died a lot. Um, you have a finite number of lives in normal mode and when you run out of lives you get booted back to the main menu and you have to retry the mission again. Now in my test recording I did finish the first mission and it took me around about half an hour-ish uh, so if I have to keep replaying later missions over and over and over again, that's going to potentially mean multiple hours to get a single episode of this game out. And yeah, it's not really my cup of tea in terms of, of games. And I'm kind of not really personally willing to put that amount of effort and energy into, uh, into playing this thing. On the other hand, casual mode, uh, not only gives you infinite lives, so you never have to worry about not finishing a mission that way. Uh, but you also take less damage from enemies and you do more damage to them so it's just easier and quicker to get through a mission. There is a catch however. Uh, this game has a pretty cool system whereby you get to uh, level up your character and your vehicle and all that kind of stuff. There's like a tech tree but you don't get access to any of that leveling up system when you're playing in casual mode. If you have a look in the lower left corner of the screen there, it says no leveling, no upgrades, no damage streaks. And I think that's really a shame. Um, I'm, I'm personally against the idea of punishing uh, a player for choosing to play the game their particular way. Like I understand that a developer might have a true or a canon idea of how they want the game to be played. Uh, but gating off content from players because they choose to play the game their own way, uh, I think that's anti-player and I think it also hurts the developer. It's obviously anti-player because it punishes those players that don't necessarily conform to the idea that the developer had originally, but it also hurts the developer because those players aren't going to see the content that the developer has spent time and resources developing in the first place. Um, so I'm, I'm already not too keen on this particular aspect of the game. Uh, but I'm not willing to put any more time and effort into this game, so we're not going to play on normal, and we're certainly not going to play on hardcore. So, that is pretty much all I have uh, in terms of an intro for this game. So, let's go and choose casual. Uh, you can see it's defaulting me to mission 2 here, because I did already complete mission 1 uh, when I was doing my test recording, but we're just going to go and play mission 1 again. You do get to choose which character you want to play as. Each character has their own kind of special abilities and stuff. As I said, we're not going to get to upgrade any of these, uh, but I'm going to flick through them quickly so you can have a look at the characters. A description of what their special ability is is over on the left if you want to read it. So that's Armand. We have Diz. We have Roxy. Gunnar, Gordon, who is Gordon Freeman from uh, Valve's Half-Life series of games. Uh, I'm playing the, the PC release of uh, Renegade Ops here, and the PC release had a, uh, a special entry of uh, Gordon as a playable character, just, uh, just for fun. And then we have two characters from the one expansion pack that was released for this game, uh, Blazemo and Crystal. Uh, they're both from the expansion. The expansion is included free on the uh, PC release of the game. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to bother playing the expansion or not. I'll see how much I enjoy or not the uh, the main game. But I'm going to play as Diz. Diz's special ability is she can fire off an EMP that temporarily disables uh, the weapons of uh, nearby enemies. So you can use that against big boss monsters so that they deal you less damage. Or you can use it against smaller enemies that are just kind of annoying you while you focus on the boss. Uh, so I find that quite useful. Uh, during my test recordings I played as Gunnar who had a, a powerful machine gun on his truck that you could uh, activate. However, uh, you can't drive while you're uh, using that gun. You have to park yourself and you just start absorbing damage like a sponge. Uh, and I kind of read through the, the other people. They also have kind of like downsides to all their weapon. Gordon Freeman gets to summon three independent, uh, you know, AI controlled um, monsters that basically fight for him, but they're really weak. Uh, I'm assuming if you play through as Gordon that you get to upgrade his uh, antlion 
uh, monsters that he can spawn to make them more powerful but obviously I'm not going to have access to that and they just die in a heartbeat even on the uh, on the first mission so I'm going to play as uh, Diz here with her EMP and we are going to start the game are in position good initiate the assault crush all opposition get your sister take her to the church run Unidentified vessel sighted off the coast. Unidentified. I said crush all opposition. Deploy mortals. Buckle up, renegades. This is it. So this is me. So I can use the uh, right analog stick on my controller to fire my machine gun and to aim it. Look out. I got a full... 360 degrees of motion with us. And then the left analog stick is used for searing and controlling the speed. Controlling the uh, speed of my vehicle. Now I'm playing with the Steam controller, which actually only has one analog stick. So the uh, the right analog stick, the one used for the weapon, is actually a uh, a touchpad, and it works fairly well, I have to say. Stop them. Inferno commands it. So I have to uh, destroy these things here. So let me just go over the user interface for uh, for the moment. Uh, in the upper left corner, hang on. In the upper left corner you see my score uh, and you see my health bar. The kind of infinity sign on the health bar is the number of lives I have. I'm playing in casual so I have infinite lives. Then below that I have my primary objective which is pointed out to me uh, on a kind of a GPS system. You can see the red arrow uh, that's kind of beside my vehicle. It points to the direction you should drive not as the crow flies but yeah, following the roads to your uh, primary objective. So the red arrow is for the primary objective. Later on you will see a grey arrow and that is for secondary objectives. Good work. Got a civilian prisoner in a nearby village. New priority. Extract that prisoner. Uh, occasionally when you uh, destroy an enemy he'll drop those green cubes those are health pickups in the lower right corner you will see an EMP this is the special ability of uh, the character that I picked so if I pull my left trigger I get to fire off this EMP and anything caught in that circle uh, will not be able to fire for a few seconds uh, and it slowly charges back up over time you can see in the lower left corner it's charging up when I use my uh, moving analog stick you'll notice I get this kind of white ring around the vehicle that shows you the direction that I am holding the stick at and uh, that's pretty much it uh, this game has a fairly my family they're hiding in the church please take me to them you heard the man this game is designed to have a fairly frenetic pace you can see I now only have three minutes left to complete this objective uh, you're kind of under the gun on the clock all the time in this game and every objective my family is safe i will barricade the church they won't last long on their own go help them out renegades so now i can access a turbo mode which lets me drive a bit quicker out there. Find them. Get them to the church. so uh, now we have a new secondary objective which is to rescue as many uh, villagers as possible. So there was uh, one prisoner being loaded for transport in this crate which I just 
throw an open. So I've now picked up one of three prisoners that I can carry at any one time. There's two. Pick up some of these health drops. And there's another one this way somewhere apparently. And I've completely mess of the jump. So let's just rescue him. He's down here in this beach. Sorry, I didn't mean to destroy your home. Okay. That's three prisoners. Sorry. I'm destroying your lives, but I'm saving you. Oh, new primary objective. They're trying to move the prisoners out of here. No way are we letting that happen. Stop those prisoner transports. So you can see I'm following the red arrow now instead of the grey arrow. The red arrow leads to my primary objective and the grey arrow to the secondary. Uh, occasionally you'll see there are brackets on the uh, on the markers for an, for an objective. So you can see the grey arrow in the middle of the screen has like two brackets underneath. As and the um, There's another prisoner but I can't pick him up because I'm already full. Uh, the red arrow has three brackets, it just now dropped to two brackets, that indicates how far away you are from the objective. The more brackets, the further away you are, and now I only have three minutes left to complete this objective. So I better hot foot it, there we go. So yes, this game is a fairly frenetic pace, you're not really designed to... let me just fire off my EMP. Uh, you're not really designed to like take your time with anything so again I can't pick up these prisoners but they're safe and let me go back to the church now where I can drop off the prisoners that I collected earlier there we go four prisoners secured now, there should be a prisoner just up here there we go there's another one over this way. But undoubtedly we will get a, uh, a new primary objective in a second. There we go. A rocket launcher truck. It's pounding that village. Put it out of action now. Now, ah, I was lucky the uh, the rocket launcher truck that I was supposed to destroy was happened to be in this specific place that I was just at. Which is convenient. This is EMP. And there's another prisoner right here. So we're full again. Actually, let me just go pick up these health packs. And get back to the church so we can drop off more of these prisoners. Whoops. Uh oh. Mortar truck spotted. Get to it before they take out the church. Okay, uh we go this way. So it should be down here somewhere. Oop. Picked up another prisoner en route. Okay, we have some incoming mortar fire. We must be getting close. Take care of these trucks first, because otherwise they'll just be annoying us all the time. So let me get up here and... Boom! EMP. Ow. I'm taking quite a lot of damage here, so let me try and get some of these health pickups. Okay, more health pickups here. Very good. Somebody is firing missiles at me, it's that guy. There's more health there, excellent. Okay, we have another mortar truck we need to take care of. And we have just three minutes to get it done. Sorry. Didn't mean to destroy your hovels.
kind of wonder if it's a false economy to be killing these guys to get their health kits. Because I'm probably wasting time and uh, health just taking care of them. So I'll fire off another EMP here. Yeah. oh So it looks like we've got three tanks to take care of. Al, stop shooting me. Okay, new primary objective. EMP's not ready, so I'm taking a bit of a beating here. Okay, EMP's just ready. Ow. Okay, Trank is disabled for a second in terms of its main gun. Boom. There we go. Okay. Next tank is this way somewhere, but we're not going to have our EMP for a while. Okay, but I have just gotten a secondary weapon, which will do a bit more damage at least. Boom! There we go, that was a secondary weapon. An anti-tank missile, which took care of that tank quite nicely. And let me just take care of these guys before we go to the next tank. See if I can get some health kits from them. Okay, he wants me to cut across this field. Okay, there's the next tank. Just kind of waiting for my EMP. Here we go. And boom. And boom. I use my tank buster gun there, which took care of it nicely. And I have one spare, which is good because it looks like there's one more tank that we need to take care of. But I just need to drive circles around this tank because I don't have an EMP left anymore. Boink. Fools, enjoy it while it lasts. You will still all burn. Curse you, Inferno. Okay, so our Inferno has a missile launcher that we now need to take care of somewhere. Primary objective, destroy the LVA missiles. Whoops, there's a mountain. We have some gunboats. So the helicopter controls a little bit differently. I have to, uh, I'm not fully free to shoot in any direction I like. I have to, uh, I have to have a helicopter kind of semi pointing the way that I want to go. Some health kits here we'll take up. And uh, there are these missile launchers on the deck of the ship that are very bad for me. 
Uh, I don't have my EMP with the uh, with the helicopter here, but what I get instead are um, flares that I can use to uh, counter the uh, rockets that the turrets on the ship are shooting at me. Like that. And I also have these helicopter bozos. They're doing some damage. Owie, owie, owie. Let's just take care of this helicopter. Stop running away from me. Let's take care of this missile launcher. Hopefully he'll drop some health. He did. Very good. I think we have more missile launchers at the rear of the ship here. My flares have recharged, so let me just go take care of that. Okay. Now I can focus on the actual missiles that we're supposed to destroy. Oh, there's some health there. I'll take that, thank you. And there's more health this way, and we have, of course, another missile launcher, because why not? And more health, excellent. Oh, here's a missile I have to destroy. Boom. Okay. Oh, looks like we have another missile launcher here. And a helicopter. So he's very kindly dropped some health. Okay, it's a missile launcher down. Boom. Objective complete. I have three secondary weapons now. What's next? Some pickups here. Primary objective. Defeat Inferno. There's a lot of missiles chasing me. Okay, countermeasures are back. Boom! Have a taste of your own medicine, Inferno. Uh, game? Are you okay? Don't have crashed. Nothing! Nothing! For this, more of your cities will be turned to ash! I am Inferno! And I have only just begun. Well, if you've only begun, you were off to a fairly bad start. And speaking of bad, uh, bad start, skill level, poor! And that is why I am playing on casual. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time on Von Milhausen Plays Renegade Ops when we begin mission 2, Mots to the Flame!